Hello, this is John from GEDMathLessons.com. Uh, it's a free GED math course. I'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, at the end of this video. But in this particular video, we're going to be focusing on building your math uh, knowledge and skills for the GED. And specifically, we're going to take a look at complex numbers. And this is going to be an introduction uh, to this concept. Now, I've seen that... Um, uh, on GED sample tests, they actually, um, I've seen some questions that involve complex numbers. Now, this is a little bit more advanced on the algebra uh, side of the house in terms of math. So you may not see a lot of it, but you certainly, uh, there's definitely a chance that you might see some questions pertaining to your knowledge of complex and imaginary numbers. So this uh, is just gonna be a basic introduction um, two complex numbers. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Okay, so before we can talk about complex numbers, we need to talk about real numbers. So let me write this over here. Real numbers. And then we'll write complex numbers over here. All right, complex numbers. All right, now let's make some uh, distinguish uh, between the two. Okay, now Real numbers is what we're technically, what we're talking about is something called the real number set. All right. It's a set of numbers um, that involve a lot of other subsets. Now, let me just basically tell you, everything that you've been working with your entire life, you've been using real numbers. Okay. So let's draw a little number line and we'll kind of break this up. Okay. We'll kind of define this. And you'll see that, hey, everything you've been working with so far have been real numbers. Complex numbers is a brand new concept, and I'll get into that in a second. So real numbers involve all the decimals, fractions, positive numbers, negative numbers, um, all that stuff that we can plot on a number line. So let's just kind of do that right now. So let's say I start with zero here, and I have one and goes two, and I just keep, keep going on and on this way. Now, if I go to the left, I'm going to get um, smaller, right? So negative 1, negative 2, etc. So these numbers here are called real numbers. Now, the numbers I just listed right here are called integers, which are part of the real numbers. But we have all kinds of numbers here. We have right here, for example, would be like the fraction 1 half. That is a real number. It's a fraction, but it's a real number. Okay. Um, I can have, uh, let's see here, uh, pi, right? Now, pi is approximately 3.14. That's what we call an irrational number. It's somewhere over here. Okay, it goes on forever, never, 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 never. But that number is also a real number. All these numbers that we can plot on the, on the number line are real numbers. So again, not to be redundant, we're talking about decimals, positive values, square roots, for example, uh, would be like located right here. Square root of two would be maybe somewhere maybe located right there if I was going to order these numbers from highest to lowest. So if you take out your calculator, like a basic calculator, and do all your calculations, all the uh, variety of numbers are going to fall into the classification of real numbers. Now, what you've been doing so far in math is been uh, manipulating real numbers, right? So we can add fractions and multiply uh, decimals by square roots and, and do all kinds of stuff. And the results of those um, operations will be another real number. So when you take real numbers and you do things with them, you're gonna end up with another real number. Now, let's talk about complex numbers. Now, let me go ahead and just state one other thing here, and then we'll see where, where, uh, the reason why we need complex numbers. Let's uh, test your ability to answer this question. The square root of 16, okay? So what is the square root of 16? Now, hopefully you know what uh, the square root of 16 is. Most of you probably said four, okay? And that would be, you would be half correct. Now you're saying, well, what do you mean by that? Well, hold on here one second, I'll explain, right? So the square root of 16, the square root of a number, okay? Think of the square root as a, as a question. And it's saying, hey, find me two numbers, the exact same numbers, such that when you multiply them together, that's the exact same numbers, you get back to this answer underneath the square root, okay? So if we think about the square root of 16, you're like, oh, okay, four multiplied by itself gets back to 16, and you would be correct, okay? Let's take another example, the square root of nine. What two numbers multiplied by themselves gets you back to 
9? Well, the obvious answer is 3. Now, I said here that you would be half correct if you answered the square root of 16 as 4. There is another answer, okay? Let me write this down here, give ourselves a little more room. So the square root of 16 can also be negative 4, because negative 4 times another negative 4 is a positive 16. Okay, so you see that uh, um, uh, that we have here for the square root of 16, we have two answers. The square root of 16 is a positive 4. It's also a negative 4. So technically, the most correct way to answer the question, the square root of 16, is what we call positive and negative 4. Okay? So with that being said, let me ask you what the answer to this question is. What's the square root of negative 16? What's the square root of negative 16? So now you have to say to yourself, okay, what number times itself gets us back to a negative 16? So you might be saying, oh boy, most people, when they're learning this, their first impulsive uh, response, and it's logical, they'll say, oh, it's negative 4. Because they think negative 4 times negative 4 will get you back to negative 16, but that's incorrect because this is going to get us to a positive 16. I need to get back to negative 16. I'm trying to find the square root of negative 16. Well, here's the deal. You'll never be able to answer this question using real numbers. There are no uh, real numbers, okay? Any two real numbers that you multiply them together will get you back to negative 16. So it's impossible to answer a question like this using the real number system, the, the set of real numbers. So to solve this problem in problem of mathematics, the minds to be out there created the complex number system. And this is extremely important. We really do need this for a lot of just so many um, parts of math. And pretty much um, once you get beyond your first year of algebra in high, at the high school level, using complex numbers becomes more and more important. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at how we, we address something like this. And again, this is not going to be a complete lesson on complex numbers. There's a lot more to it. But I want to get you, give you a good uh, fundamental introduction to the concept. So how do we answer this question? The square root of negative 16. Now again, we know that the answer is not going to be negative 4. So what we do, what, what, and what we do in mathematics is we come up with a new definition. We're going to say that the square root of negative 1, the square root of negative 1 is going to be something called an, a little i, okay? Okay, so this is an i. You're like, well, that's kind of weird. So this i means it's just an imaginary uh, unit, okay? So the complex number system, I'll get back to this in a second. I'm not going to just leave it there, is made up of something called a real part plus an imaginary part, okay? So the imaginary part is going to be what's something, is what is new to most of you, okay? So imaginary numbers are part of the complex number system, very much like fractions being part of the real number system. So really, I want you to get you to understand what an imaginary number is. And it sounds kind of crazy, right? Like an imaginary number, like that's kind of weird. This concept is abstract. Complex numbers, imaginary numbers, imaginary numbers are, you know, it is an abstract concept, but you ha what we, we needed to solve practical problems like what is the square root of neg negative 16. Okay, so what we're going to do by definition is we're going to state that the square root of negative 1 is 1i, one imaginary number unit. So, with that being said, we can now solve or answer this particular question. Now, this, this is how we do this. Now, before I even get into this a little bit further, I'm going to um, uh, make sure you understand something about square roots. If I want to find out what the square root of 16 is, or a positive 16, I can also answer this question. What is the square root? I can break up the factors here. What is the square root of 4 times 4? Because 4 times 4 is 16. Do you see that? So... If I break up this number into its factors, okay, and that could be 2 times 8 or 4 times 4, so let's just use 4 times 4. What you're allowed to do in math and algebra is, is uh, 
kind of rip this big square root into two smaller square roots. In other words, I can go square root of four times the square root of four. So you see that here? Instead of one big square root, I can write two separate that go over each of these factors. Now the square root of four is plus or minus two, but let's just keep it easy, it's two, right? And the square root of four is two, and two times two is four. And we already know that the square root of 16 is plus or minus four, but let's just keep it simple here. We'll just keep it with four, right? So I can look at my answer this way, or I could go the long route and look at the factors and rip them up individually, and then multiply the answers and get the same answer, okay? That's important for you to understand because I need to under, uh, use the, use this principle to handle this square root of negative 16. So let's take a look at that now. So the square root of negative 16 is the same thing as the square root of, ne uh, of negative 1 times a positive 16. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this uh, negative 1 and 16 into the individual square roots. So I'm going to have this as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 16. So this is a little trick we can do in math. So now this kind of liberates the 16 from that negative. This I can handle with real numbers. And this here, the square root of negative 1, recall I uh, defined it as 1i or i, okay? So this is just something we need to just know. This is an imaginary unit. Okay, so now when I do this, the square root of negative 1 is an i, and the square root of 16 is plus and minus 4. Okay, so the answer is, and by the way, we always write the i behind the real number part, is plus or minus 4i. So the square root of negative 16 is equal to plus or minus 4i, and i is the imaginary unit, okay? So the imaginary unit is part of the complex number system. Now, if you understand this much, okay, A, let's kind of go back up here and do a quick review, that the real number system, everything we've been used to so far, basically can't help us to answer a question like this, okay? Square root of negative 16. So we need a new number system or more expansive number system, complex numbers, okay? And then complex numbers, part of the complex numbers, what makes the complex numbers the complex numbers is this imaginary unit. And that's defined as the square root of negative 1 being equal to i, okay? And then we just basically use the properties of radicals and square roots to basically handle questions like this. Much more on this topic, but um, if you get this, then that's a really good uh, start for you. So let me go ahead and wrap this video up. Um, if you enjoy my videos, I do a ton of stuff uh, for the GED and just math videos in general. So please consider uh, subscribing. And to get notifications of my um, latest videos, make sure you hit that um, bell icon on your smartphone or, or computer. Um, uh, or you won't get my latest videos. I'm doing videos all the time. So you know, I would suggest that you do that just so you can get my uh, newest material. And then, hey, if you enjoyed the, the, the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and leave me some uh, feedback. I try to read as many comments as possible so I can see what questions you have out there. And then I'm going to invite you to my free GED math course, gedmathlessons.com. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. But um, again, uh, since the changes in 2014, for the GED, for those of you who don't know, um, the GED really has, you know, it's become more, definitely more challenging, let's just say that much. And you have to have a strong knowledge of algebra and geometry to get through the GED, you know, successfully. And the number one thing that holds people up is the math section. And being a math teacher, I do these type of videos to help people out. Had just tremendous success with this site. I'm always looking for new ways to improve it. And, you know, um, that comes from your feedback. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, have a great day.